said about I'm going to record. We'll have some, we might have a few people joining a little bit late and we'll have some people out on the road, but here we go. Aquí vamos. Uh, bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Welcome everybody. Espero que ustedes estén bien. I hope you're well. ¿Cómo están ustedes? ¿Cómo están ustedes? ¿Bien? Bien. bien. ¿Mal? No, no. Ok. Uh, vale, bueno. ¿Qué vamos a hacer hoy? What are we going to do today? We're going to spend a good half of our class on the number thing, because as you can imagine, it takes a lot of time. We'll all, uh, we'll spend time, probably the next couple sessions, we'll take at least a little chunk of time for numbers, because that, that repetition and practice uh, uh, is always, always essential. Um, Today, we're going to focus more on the double digit numbers working up to 100. We'll kind of introduce what happens with the hundreds, which is not quite as hard, but uh, the heavy duty practice is going to be with the double digit numbers. And we'll work our way up to another dictado with that. Uh, we are going to also practice a lot with these um, uh, to at least two, but I hope we can work on the third verb, the two verbs for to be, because boy, they're problematic. And yeah, oh, they're stinkers. The said is that thing, the two verbs, they're different verbs and they have different conjugations that mean to be. Uh, uh, this is something, oh, I don't know, do I want to say unique to Spanish? Well, I know French does not have it. They have one verb to be in French, but Spanish has two. And uh, there, so we're going to have two challenges. One challenge is just getting used to what are the different forms. Like people get used to am is our, am is our, am is our. Uh, so getting used to the conjugations, pairing them up with the right human being that that verb form talks about. And then the second speed bump we have with to be verbs is, hmm, when do I use the one kind, which is called ser, when do I use the other kind of to be verb, which is estar? And that, honestly, if that feels really funky and strange, uh, then welcome to the club. You're a very normal person. It takes a while to get used to that. So be patient. It feels very yourself. funky and strange, yes. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's kind of complicated. It's, uh, if you get a couple of very general <laughs> overall rules about it, uh, you can you can pick out which verb to use about really 60 or 70 percent of the time. Yeah, it but, kind of made sense when I was reviewing like a permanent thing or is it a, you know, like a thing that's like yeah. a point in time that changes. It made a little bit of sense, but I went to those worksheets and I'm like, OK, whatever. Right? Well, like yeah, so, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's a funky thing, but we'll work through all of that. And, and it does take time and you won't be perfect with it right away. And that's okay. Uh, but you will, you know, once you get into that 60 to 70% range, correct, you're on the way. That's a good normal progression, but we're going to start out. We're going to start out with a little bit of practice with that edit. That how to oh that trill the R thing. Mm -hmm. And again, this is something that does take time. I hope you had a chance to watch this video. Yeah. <laughs> if you did not go back and look at it, I'll make sure I put the link for that in in um our in our, our recap email. Uh, it is a very good video because one thing it emphasizes is that there are kind of two factors at play with trilling an R. One is letting your tongue be just that flag, that idea that let your tongue be a flag and let it flap. And the other is to get airflow over that. Now, I can't tell you why some people just are able to trill an R almost right off the bat. Uh, and others work for months and months, no exaggeration, to get it. 
Um, but that whole thing of getting some airflow through your palate area and let your tongue flap actually does help. And um, okay, we're going to start with something which is uh, actually another good suggestion he had from the video was that uh, when we make the F sound, you're pushing air through. Yeah. So we're going to start with the R practice with some words that have the F sound to begin so that you get that airflow going through your mouth. Now, hmm. you know, an easy thing that a lot of people suggest for trilling an R is that, which is kind of true, we've got the single flap, which is the, the single letter R, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got the double R, which uh, is that still considered a, a separate letter? It used to be considered, I think it is a separate letter in the Spanish language, at least it used to be. And because uh, they changed the rules on these things as the years go by. Um, but um, English words like ladder, no. utter, uh, yeah, uh, you know, it, let, butter. butter, 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 butter. Yeah, the single R is like that oh. English sound in, you know, ladder, butter. Okay. Most of us don't say butter <laughs> or ladder. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when you say it at a normal speed, you actually do get a little flap, and ah, uh, it's right there. It's right behind your teeth. And it's one time up against your teeth, up on the top palate. But we're going to start with some F words first that were actually not on your list. So we're going to take a look at those first. Okay. Uh, because this thing of having an F at the beginning gets uh, that uh, airflow going through your palate area. Okay. So we're going to try these words together. Frente. 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 These will Frente. not be as strong. Frente. It'll be the single flap. Frente. Frente. Frente is this part of your, it's this part of your face. Frente. Frente. Yeah. This is what you do when you want to stop your car. This is an action word. Frenar. 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 To break. Frenar. Yeah. To break. Not, not as in fracture something, but break is in, put the brakes on, <laughs> okay? Here's a word that means a phrase or a sentence. Frase. 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 It's not a strong troll. Frase. Si. Frase. Frase. Oh, here's a word we use a lot because it means cold. Frio. 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 Okay. Uh, here is what you do when you sadly have to scrub anything. Scrub. Pregar. 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 That means to scrub. Ah. Uh, ah. Frustrante. Frustrante. Frustrating. Frustrante. Wow, well, we got two of them there. Frustrante. 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 Si. Uh, okay. And then we've got another FR combination. Oh, something that smells wonderful. Fragante. 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 Si. Bien. Okay, so those are FRs to get ourselves kind of revved up. Let's take a look at the items off of the list. Oops, perdón, I'm in the wrong direction here. Bien, okay. Um, ere, ere is the name of the letter, ere. Mm -hmm. um, if it is a single R and uh, if it's in the middle or at the end of a word, it'll be like this ladder, butter, cutter, utter kind of thing that we do, okay? So we've got, let's try this word here. Caro. 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 You're going to shortly hear a difference between this word here and the one over on the right. They are slightly different, even though they're alike in most ways. 
This is mm -hmm. one of the, yeah, the first two on the list are words that can be confused with the one on the right-hand side. But we got the word for expensive or pricey. Got him. Oh, yeah. Got him. Okay, just a single flap. We've got the word that means, but, you know, I like it, but it's too expensive. <laughs> Me gusta, pero es demasiado caro. Okay, we got the word pero. 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 Single pero. I. Pero. 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 We've got a word that people use to mean clear, but also people will say this just by itself when they uh, are in agreement with you. If they say, oh, of course, <laughs> here's the word. Claro. 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 See? Claro. Un azul claro, clear blue, meaning a light blue, or, oh, sí, claro. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, you're agreeing with somebody. Here's a word that means raw in some slang. It also means hungover. Yeah. Uh, crudo. 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 <laughs> if you watch the news, the jokes about the crudite thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Crudite means raw. Yeah. Okay. So crudo. 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 And we get that little D with the th 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 thing in that word too. Crudo. 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 Okay. Yeah. And we've got a helpful word that we use a lot, which means what it sounds, it sounds like it should mean this. Grupo. 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 Okay. Grupo. Now, we're going to all look, take a look at the right-hand side here. And we're going to look at these examples. And they are examples of R, <laughs> which separate letter. Actually, it's a double letter. Uh, just like the double L and the CH. CH is, is not considered a single letter by the acad uh, academia, but now uh, it used to be. Okay. R does get a strong trill. This is the one that is, might feel harder for you, although a lot of you are sounding pretty good on your single R's. Uh, R, you got to, yeah, let your tongue flap more. R, R. 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 Uh, the R uh, is more prolonged. And when the single R, when the single R is the first letter of the word, when it is the lead off letter of the word, then that single R will actually do a strong trill just like the double R. But I can say it so you know. We're gonna look at it, look, look at strictly the double R's. Here's a word that means not expensive, but something entirely different. It means a car, the vehicle. Carro, 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 carro. Carro, carro. So here's the difference. You can hear it. Carro on the left hand side. Carro. Carro. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here's a word of uh, man's best friend. Perro. 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 Here are two words that, though this word but is used quite a lot, just like it's used quite a lot in English. Yeah. But there's a big difference between pero, pero. and perro. 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 Sí. Okay. Here is something that you know, probably a lot of you know about if you go to any kind of festival here in the Southwest. This is a goodie that sold at, at food carts. If you go to zoo lights, if you go to any kind of festival, a lot of people have these. It's a, a donut kind of pastry. It's a, it's very light. Okay, mm -hmm. these are wonderful treat. It's a wonderful pastry. Churro, yeah. churro, 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 churro. 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 Uh, churros y chocolate. Churros churro are often paired with hot chocolate. That's a really thick, gooey yeah. hot chocolate. Churro, churro. Okay. Mm -hmm. Churros, you can find those, uh, yeah, in Spain, in Mexico, and they uh, morph into some different shapes. Uh, here we, oh, we've got a, a color word, which you're going to see very soon, because we're going to be using mm. a lot of color words when we start using that verb ser to tell what color something is. Here's mm. one of the words, because there's more than one word for brown. Uh, marron. 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 
Marron. Marron. Marron is a word you hear for brown uh, all the time in Spain, a lot of times in Colombia. Um, uh, marron you don't hear as much in Mexico. They like café or color de café, but marron, marron is an important mm -hmm. word to know. Oh, here's a fun word to know, the word for drunk, <laughs> yeah. Ah borracho. 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 Ah, ooh, está borracho. Wow, <laughs> that guy is drunk. Hey, está borracha. Okay, so the double R strong trill. A lot of you sound pretty, pretty good with this. I'm impressed, that's good so far. Now. Keep in mind, if the R leads off the word, it will get that same kind of strong trill. So here's another color word that you're going to soon, in the next couple of lessons, start to hear more and more. It is rojo. 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 And you got that J that sounds like rojo. an English A, right? Rojo. 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 We have a word that we actually see a lot here in the Southwest because we have street names with this. We have city names with this. It is the word for river. Rio. 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 Okay. Rio. Uh, Rio. Everybody knows Rio Grande. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, Rio. River. Okay. We've got a word that might mean rich as in has lots of moolah or a word that's also used to say that something is delicious. Now, why it means two different things, I can't tell you, but it, it does. Uh, so if you wanna say something is yummy, <laughs> we often use this word with estar. Uh, and we also use this to say that somebody is a rich person. Rico. 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 Yeah. Okay. Ah, we got actually an easy word, yet at the same time hard. Hard because it's long. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's take this apart into syllables so that we can maybe see the three different syllables. Ooh, we actually we got four different syllables. No wonder it's so long. Okay. It does mean restaurant. It looks a lot like restaurant, except it gets an E at the end. Restaurante. 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 One strong R at the lead off and a single flap at the end. Restaurante. 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 And You'll hear this a lot because people eat out. And if you travel, you will hear it a lot. Restaurante. 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 Bien. Okay. And now we got a short word. We get a strong trill at the beginning and a single flap in the middle. Uh, this is a word that means both rare, as in not common, and also is used quite often to say something strange or weird or really odd. Uh, in in a negative kind of connotation, okay? Uh, raro. 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 Okay. Raro. Uh, Raro. If you see a clown walking down the street and it's any day but Halloween, <laughs> somebody Raro. may look at that person and say, hmm, es muy raro. 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 Okay. Raro. raro. Your, your Ours are sounding good. I got to tell you guys, that sounds really, really great. Okay. Yeah. See, yeah, uh, you know, and when I did that video, then there was another one on the sidebar, this same couple that does the greetings. Remember those two, the young couple? And they had one on trilling ours. And then he was doing a thing where they separated the word like hero. So you do it slow, like you get the single R, and then you make it come together faster. So you're pedro, 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 pedro. pedro. But, yeah. And the whole game, something like camaran, camarello, camarello, camaran. You're just keep repeating that trying to get that thing going before i get confused is like it's a troll in the beginning but not in the other but part. not yeah those okay like restaurante yeah, yeah. like that you're right and, and and there are a lot of words that will have that although when when you if it's only you know when you get that lead off and then you know if you've got a word like camarero yeah. Camarero, uh, which means waiter, camarero, one of the two words for waiter, camarero, uh, uh, has two R's in it, but they're both in the middle. 
So they're both the single flap. Yeah. Single flap. Yeah. Camarero. Camarero. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, just keep practicing it as you go along. You're going to hear a lot of R's with our number words. So you're going to keep recycling that practice over and over as you're recycling your numbers. So this is good. Uh, we're going to take a really, really quick look at two last letters, which are not too tough to do. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, but we're going to take a kind of a cursory glance. The reason we take a cursory glance is that so that you know what sounds they make. But, you know, remember, really, the most crucial thing to get right in Spanish with pronunciation is, oddly enough, not really the R or R, <laughs> but more those vowels. When people mess up their vowels, when they don't pronounce the A ah or the E or the E or the O or the U properly, when we anglicize vowels, that's when you open yourself up to be misunderstood. Or you say one word when you really meant something else. <laughs> okay, so remember your vowels that you had right at the top, the A, E, E, O, U, uh, all those vowels, they are the most 100% crucial sounds to make sure you keep practicing and practicing correctly. But we are going to take a look at a couple of sounds, and these are words that uh, don't happen in a whole lot of words. Just like in English, we don't have like tons and tons of words with X and Z. Uh, yeah, you know, if you do uh, games like word games like uh, Wordle, <laughs> X is not going to be the, your first word choice to try to eliminate what, you know, and guess the word. Uh, X, this word, um, this letter here is called X, X. Uh, X is the name of the letter, X, and it gets a, you know, I want to say two sounds, but it actually gets a bunch of sounds. I, I will send you in, in the email a little, uh, uh, actually a good video. It's the only good video I saw that actually explains the problem with X. X, um, I can tell you in general, I have a couple of pronunciations, but in Mexico, that letter X uh, in Mexico gets a lot of other pronunciations because it also goes back to being used in a lot of the indigenous languages that were there before Spanish. So the odd eccentricities of X because of the indigenous languages of Mexico, the video will tell you about those. And she will upfront say in the video, sometimes I don't know how to say these words. So, but mm. most of the words you're going to see that are not geographical names <laughs> that have these equis will get one of two sounds, okay? It'll either be an XXX or it'll be one of these geographic things, okay? So we're going to take a look at the XXX. And this comes really from a Latin thing. And it'll be like what you expect it to be. Yeah, X, yeah. Um, okay. So we get words like, oh, here is a cognate, experto. 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 Ah, it means expert, yeah. Oh. Here's another word that a lot of people use, like when they'll say claro, of course, or if they want to tell you, oh, you're exactly right. You got it. You got this. Yes. Ooh, exacto. 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 A lot of people will just pump that word out. And that means, oh, you got that one, girl. Yeah. Exacto. Exacto. Here's a longer word that is hard, but it's used quite a lot. Be and it is something that we sometimes uh, use to tell people, oh, I am not from here. <laughs> I am a foreigner. Here's the word for uh, actually both abroad, as in traveling abroad, and the word for foreign. Extranjero. 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 Oh, a double R. Extranjero. Oh, look at that. We, we got two R's right in the middle. Extranjero. 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 See, uh, people, you may hear people saying things like, ah, voy al extranjero, I'm going abroad, yeah? Or, uh, o por ejemplo, um, uh, este grupo, so these people are on a tour, es un grupo de extranjeros, 
it's a group of foreigners. So you may hear it used in that context. Sometimes an X is buried in the middle and this often happens with geographical things and it won't get the X sound. It'll be, so we don't say Mexico, uh, mm -hmm. right? It'll be a ha ha ha, okay? So when it's in these geographic kind of things, no, it's usually going to be a ha ha ha. You're going to see in the video layer. Sometimes it's even a sh sh sh, which technically sh shouldn't <laughs> exist in Spanish, but in Mexican Spanish sometimes it does. But it's connected always with this X thing. So we have Mexico, 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 Mexico. and Mexico. we get that thing that used to be an independent country, republic before joining the United States, which is called Texas. Texas. Yeah. Texas. 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 Sometimes, sometimes in old, old maps or old writings from old span, when I say old, I mean like 15, 1600s, they used to spell that X with a J. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. still get that ha ha J sound with these. Yeah. Uh, you see Texas, Texas spelled T E J A S on old maps or M E J I C O, but uh, it has been uh, replaced with the X. Mexico. 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 Texas. Texas. Bien. Okay. Bien. And sometimes uh, when we talk about the words pertaining to that, you know, you get Mexicano. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to say Mexicano. <laughs> Mexicano, Mexican. No. Oh, Tejano. Tejanos. Texan. And Tejano is a type of, it's a, mm -hmm. um, a genre of music. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Tejano, you'll hear sometimes mm -hmm. in relation to music. Okay. Um, last one, we're going to look at this one. This is called Zeta. The Brits call this letter Z, Z, Zeta. Uh, we call it Z uh, in Spanish. That letter is called Zeta, Zeta. And it, in Latin American Spanish, it will get the S sound, but no z, no buzz to it. So it should just be a flat out, flat S sound. So we get words like, oh, the word for pencil. This is a frequently used word, lapis. 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 So we don't want to pronounce it lapis. It's lapis. 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 We get lapis. the word for, oh, fox, zorro. 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 It's zorro. 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 We get the word for light, be it electric or natural, and that is luz. 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 Okay. We get the word for cross, be it religious or just, you know, not religiously symbolic, but that symbol. Cruz. 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 We get, ooh, here's a long word. And this word means left, like the direction, not left over, but left the direction. Izquierda, izquierda. 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 This is an important word. Yeah, izquierda. 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 On the left will be a la izquierda. A la izquierda means to the left. A la izquierda. Izquierda. That's an important word when people are giving you directions. Izquierda is, you know, the, ooh, yeah, well, you know, you people who like forget the left and right and they do the L thing with their finger. Yeah. Izquierda. Okay. Um, Okay, and now we get a word which is, ooh, this is not a fun, this is a negative word, negative word. It means shame, shame, uh, embarrassment, vergüenza. Vergüenza. Yeah, vergüenza. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a little variation. We will not dwell on it, but just so that you can hear it because sometimes in videos that you listen to, you will hear people from, with different, um, uh, from different countries, okay? Uh, not in Latin America. Latin America, it's the s -s -s this seta. But this seta in Spain will sound like a TH. 
Okay, so those words will sound like this if you hear a, a Spaniard. They will be lapiz, torro, luz, cruz, izquierda, vergüenza. It'll sound like a th. Uh, Spanish it has this th 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 thing, which uh, uh, is a is people say it's lisping. It is not lisping, but the z makes a th sound. And remember that also this CI or CE combination in Spain Spanish gets that same th 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 sound. Yeah. yeah. So in Spain, these words are cero, centro, centavo, tita, diti, tiento, tielo. I can do it but I don't do it naturally. I have to think about that, even though I spent a lot of time in Spain um, because I always learned without the TH sound, but yeah, that's where it's at. So Seta will get that. Okay, bien. So just remember Seta for all of Latin America it has the flat, flat S sound and that's all that you need to know with that. Okay, bien, good, bien, bien, bien. perfecto, okay. Um, bueno, a los números. We're going to go on to the numbers. Los números, los números. Okay, and your uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Well, except for diez. These numbers will all be repeated. I guess we should say except for the cero and the diez, the two ends of that uh, ten-digit scale. They all get repeated when we do the additional or the additional, the higher numbers. And we're gonna focus on these double digit numbers. And let's take a look at this chart. We're gonna look at our double digit little babies here. And then we'll do some practice with them. Okay. And the one thing to remember here mm -hmm. is that, um, We're looking at 40 on up, right? Uh, after 30, 30, 40 through 100. Um, when you're saying 41, 42, 43, we just add E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, E6, E7, E8, E9. You're always saying, it, it will always sound like the math. Yeah, you're adding. <laughs> Because that little word E spelled like with a Y, or in Spanish that's called Y, it means and. Uh, now, when people say the numbers quickly, that little Y, that E sound, which means and, is going to really slide into the last number. It's going to slide. And it's going to, that sound will go by quickly. So we're gonna take them slower right now. And we're gonna look at the 40 through 90 here, right? We had 20, 20, right? We had 30, 30, but now we've got, and you'll notice these are all enta, 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 enta. Just like mm -hmm. we say 40, 50, 60. The T-Y in English, it becomes an enta, 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 enta. So we get 40. 40. 40. And when you have C-U-A, the U and the A have to be pronounced, you know, they'll slide together. Ua, ua, qua. 40. 40. 40. 40. Okay, so, you know, 41, 42, 43, all of those. Let's look at the 50 word. It looks a lot like cinco. We drop the O off the end of the cinco, right? And we get cincuenta. 50. 50. 50. And 50. notice we've got a C U E in the middle, and that U E they go together. That's what we call a diphthong. And the it's U E U E U E U E. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. It'll sound 50. it's like a W. Mine's a B, kind of like a W sound in English. Okay. Yeah. Next, we get these next two are the ones that people confuse because there's only one letter difference between these two. And that makes it difficult if you're not listening super, super closely. 
But the 60 takes the word seis, S-E-I-S, -E drops the I out of the middle, it becomes sesenta. Sesenta. But notice we keep from seis, we keep the us from the beginning and the us from the end. Sesenta. Sesenta. Next, we get the one that is different by one letter. Instead of uh, you know, say the so double S, we get an S and a T, an S and a T. And just like we dropped the I from seis, we drop the I from siete, seven. And we get sete, sete, setenta. 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 So, sesenta, double S, setenta. 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 See? Yeah. Next, and this is the one that almost nobody gets wrong ever because I don't know. It's just so, I guess it's easy. Ocho, ocho. We drop the O off the end of ocho and we get ochenta. 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 Right? And uh, nueve does change a little bit. Nueve, nine, has a UE. Nueve, nueve, right? Mm -hmm. But when we change it into the, the bigger number, we take that UE from nueve and we condense it into an O. So it becomes noventa. 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 Okay. Well, let's take a look at these numbers and see if we can say what these numbers are. And these won't just be 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, but they'll be, you know, at, with an E and adding another number. So we get 47. 47. 47. Yeah? Okay. Uh, 76. I'll do one more for you. 76. 76. Does somebody want to take a shot at 92? 92. 92. Perfecto. 92. Now, when you're practicing now, it is okay to take it slowly to make sure you get all those sounds right. But keep in mind, when you hear somebody on the street telling you a number, it will sound much faster. So instead of sounding like 92, it'll be 92. Okay. 92. Yeah. They're going to slide it together. So for listening, eventually you have to get used to the speed of 92. Yeah. But for practicing, so you say it properly, we'll be taking it slowly. See? Mm -hmm. yeah? Okay. Let's take a look at 48. Who wants to try 48? 48. 48. 48. Muy bien. 48. 48. Bien. Okay. Uh, Pam, try the next one. 55. Oh, no. Uh, 50. Uh, 55. Muy bien. 55. 55. 55. Okay. 55. Uh, who would like to take 81? I'll take it. Bien. Ocho y uno. Ochenta. Y uno. Uh, y uno. Ochenta y uno. Y uno. Ochenta y uno. Y uno. Ochenta y uno. Ochenta y uno. Ochenta y uno. Ochenta y uno. <laughs> bien. Okay. Uh, okay, bien. And, um, perfecto. Okay, 54, 54. 54. 54. 54. 54. 54. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50 y 4. 50 y 4. Ok, bien. Let's look at 69. 60. 69. 9. 60 y 9. 60 y 9. Uh, Richard, see if you can take 44. Uh, 44. Excelente, sí. 44, 
OK? Uh, yeah. And you'll notice when I say it as 44, that E goes by so fast, you hardly even hear it. It is a mere blip, yeah. not on the radar screen. It really is. But do practice it slowly so that you make all the sounds properly. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. Uh, oh, 93. Kevin, try 93. Uh, 93. Excelente. Sí, 93. We hope you don't get up to that many reps, or if you do, wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, bien. Uh, bueno, Tania, how about 88? 88. 88. 88. Okay, uh, let's try 41, Pam. Okay, 41. 41, muy bien, sí. 41, 41, 41, 41. Yeah, they're all going to slide right together. Here we go. Oh, we got a 67. Hoy, uh, 67. Ah, 67, muy bien, sí. 67, 67. But fast, it'll sound like this, 67, 67, 67, bien. Okay, let's try 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. 73. Sixty is repetition on the s s s at the s sound. Sesenta, setenta, yeah. Sesenta, setenta, setenta y tres. Bien, okay. Bien, bien, okay. Vale. So there we've got our double digits. Let's take a look at. Ooh, let's move to some price stuff. Ooh. <laughs> Which one? Cuál? Esto sí creo. Oh, let's make this bigger. Oh, let's look at cuánto cuesta. How much does it cost? Uh, cuánto? How much? Cuánto? Cuánto cuesta? How much does it cost? See? ¿Sí? Uh, ah, la camisa roja. And leave off the 99, leave off the 99 for now. Let's look at the 23, 23. ¿Cuánto cuesta la camisa roja? This red shirt, let's make it even bigger. 23. Si? 23. Uh, 20? 20. 23. 23. 23. Si, cuesta, it costs, cuesta, 23, and like, if you want to really say a 99, it might be 23 con, well, con 99, okay? Wow. But we're not going to repeat all the 99 because you, like, everything is 99 here, right? Let's take a look at these. Ooh, los pantalones negros. The black pants here. ¿Cuánto cuestan? 31. 31. 31, sí. Con 50, con 50, mm -hmm. 50, sí. 31, 31, okay, vale, ooh, uh, la camisa gris, the gray shirt way over here, ¿cuánto cuesta? 48, 48, 48 con 99, sí, bien, okay, vale, muy bien, vamos a ver, ooh, los zapatos aquí, los zapatos aquí, right in the middle, the 62, ¿cuánto cuestan? 62. 62. Con 99, sí. 60, 62. 62, sí. Con 99, sí. Uh, oh, let's look at these two 30 numbers mm -hmm. here. 35 and 38. ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Cuánto cuestan? How much do they cost? Uh, 35. 35. 35. 35 y 38. 35 y 38. Muy bien, muy bien. Ok. Vale. Uh, bueno, vamos a ver, vamos a ver, vamos a ver. Uh, algo más difícil. Something a little bit harder. Uh, más difícil, más difícil. 
Uh, aquí, ¿cómo se dice 89? Ah, sí. Um, está 89. 89, 89. We're going to leave their 100 for just a bit. ¿Cómo se dice 79? 79. 79. 70. 70. 70. 70. Okay. Yeah, we go hard on the T. 70. 70. 79. 79. 79. Bien, 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 bien. Perfecto. Ah, ok. Ah, otra cosa. ¿Dónde está? ¿Dónde está? Uh, eso no. Eso no. Ah, aquí. Ah, bien, 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 bien. Okay. Ah, 41. Que está 41. 41, sí. Ah, sí, los pantalones cuestan 41, sí, bien. Ah, a ver, uh, estos zapatos, these black shoes, sí, estos zapatos negros, ¿cuánto cuestan? Cinco y dos. Uh, in... 50 y dos, y dos, 52, 52 con, with, yeah, that con, the, instead of a point, ah, 52 con 50, mm. sí, ah, 48, we're going to take the 48 and the 75, ¿cómo se dice 48? Ah, 48, 48 con, with, 60, 68. 70, we gotta go hard on the team. 70 y 5. 75. Bien, bien, bien. Perfecto. Ok. Muy bien, muy bien, bien, muy bien. Uh, let's go back to an older number. ¿Cómo se dice? 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. ¿Cómo se dice? 33. Um, 33. 33. 33. 33. 33. Sí. Oh, lots of bars in there. 33. 33. Bien, bien. Vale. Perfecto. Perfecto. Ok. Muy bien. Um, any quick question on the double digit? Because if not, we're going to do a little dictado, a little dictation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Un lápiz, una pluma, get a pen, sí, 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 algo, y uh, papel, pero no importa, it doesn't matter what kind of paper, it can be any old scrap that you've got. Okay, you're going to hear, uh, I'm going to give you 10 numbers, 10 numbers, and uh, I will say each number twice, because now we're up to bigger numbers, you're really going to need to hear them twice, because you're, you're hearing, you know, both digits, right? Okay. Uh, you'll hear each number three times, uh, two times slowly, one time super fast, and then we'll give you the answers at the end. Vale, bueno, um, número uno, number one. Cuarenta y dos. Cuarenta y dos. And the fast one, cuarenta y dos. Número dos. Number two. Noventa y tres. Noventa y tres. And the fast one, noventa y tres. Okay. Número tres. Number three. Sesenta. 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 Okay. Número cuatro. Treinta y ocho. Treinta y ocho. Treinta y ocho. Número cinco. Setenta y cuatro. Setenta y cuatro. Setenta y cuatro. Okay. Número seis. Cincuenta y cinco. Cincuenta y cinco. Cincuenta y cinco. 
Número 7. 67. 67. 67. ¿Sí? Número 8. Número 8. 22. 22. 22. ¿Sí? Número 9. 80 y 9. 80 y 9. 89. And we're going to throw you a slight curveball with the last one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's only slight. 15. 15. 15. They're all double digit numbers. Okay, let's look and see how many of them you've got. And our goal is to try to get at least seven out of 10 of those right. That's our goal. Yeah, 42, 93, 60, 38, 74, 55, 67, 22, 89, 15. Oh, there you go. ¿Sí? ¿Bien? Sí, bien. Ok, vale. All right. And um, <laughs> it is always ok to ask people if they're telling you prices. Mm, más despacio, slower, por favor, yeah? Slower, please, it is always okay to do that. Because sometimes, especially with numbers, they're gonna go very, very fast. And uh, yeah. Yes. Slower is despacio. 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 Okay. Más, more slowly, please. Más despacio, por favor. Yeah. Or, or, or you can tell somebody, repeat that, please. Repite. Repita, por favor. Sí. Repita. Repita, por favor. Repita, por favor. Okay. Uh, you know, people will know that you need that. Okay. Um, we're going to take a look at kind of a preview for higher numbers. Uh, well, let's put it this way, preview for hundreds so that you get an idea of how that hundred idea plays out. We have the word 100 and then we're going to have multiple hundreds after that, right? Uh, the word for 100 is 100, yeah. if it's exactly 100, 100, 100, yeah, but Whenever it's 101, 102, 103, anything higher than 100 <laughs> to 199, it becomes the longer form of 100, which means we put a to on the end of it. To, to, ciento, ciento, okay? So um, that we're gonna watch a portion of, I'll send you the link for the whole video because it never hurts to get more practice. But uh, we're going to watch it from the middle, from where he picks up with the hundred idea. And uh, we're going to listen to this. And I'll probably stop it because it's going to come to a crucial point pretty quickly on. You can see the guy in the plaid shirt, right? See? Mm -hmm. yeah. Got it. Bien. Okay. Uh, and you can never tell YouTube volumes are all over the place. Okay. If we can start to put those in between numbers together and guess what? We're going to do it the same way as we do in English. We just have one little thing to remember. If we want to say the numbers between 30 and 40 and between 40 and 50, etc. All we have to do is remember the word and the letter. Now here's what you need. The and if the last digit, let's say we're looking at three digit numbers, 135, 100. 46, 199, yeah? This little word eight will become important. If the last of the three digits, a three digit number, if the last digit is higher than zero, you're gonna need this little word e at the very end. Mm -hmm. But we're not gonna say 100 
and 20 and three for 123. Yeah. It'll be 120 and three. You only need this word E and when you've got a digit higher than zero in the last digit place. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You'll see what he means. Yeah. Because a lot of people start to go through this thing where they'll say, siento y veinte y tres. And mm, no, yeah. no es necesario. That's not necessary. And people will kind of like think and listen to that and say, what did they say? Siento y veinte is not a thing. It's just ciento veinte. But 123, ciento veinte tres. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in other words, 120 ends in a zero. So we don't have the word E anywhere. Ciento veinte. But 123, ciento tres. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why? And it's pronounced in context. We don't say Y because that's really just the name of the letter, right? We just say E. It sounds like the letter I almost. Okay. So if we're going to say, let's put 34 up there. 34. All we're going to do is do the same thing we do in English. We take the word for 30, we take the word for 4, but we're just going to put the letter Y in there because it's 30 and 4. And that one you already know. So we have this, 34. But 134 is 134. And the E only comes in at the end, okay? Because this letter four, or this number four, is higher than a zero. You, we look at the last digit. That's where the E comes in. That's all you got to remember. So we don't say 34. We say 30 and four. We don't say 56. We say 50 and six, like this. Cinquenta y seis. Let's try 75. Just think about 75 for a second. Okay. 70 and Five, setenta y cinco. Now let's try two more, just get in a little practice, all right? Eighty-eight. Okay, eighty-eight. Ochenta y ocho. And let's do ninety-four. Ninety and four. Ochenta y cuatro. There you go. And that takes us all the way up to ninety-nine. See how fast you're learning to count? It's great. Let's get the hundreds numbers now. 100 by itself is 100. 100. That's if you were just going to say the number 100. 100. But if I'm going to say 101 or 130, 100 and anything else, I'm going to use 100. 100. Okay? So let's try 120. We just simply say, ciento veinte, ciento veinte. Now, what if we were going to say 199, 199? That 90, remember where the 90 goes? Sometimes students get confused where, okay, wait, where did the and go? Yeah. Just do the same we did with tens, the tens numbers a while ago. 90 and 9. So 190 and 9. Ciento Noventa y nueve. Okay. Those, the word and is always going to go in between the ones and the tens numbers or the 1,000 and the 10,000 or the 1 million and the 10 million. It goes in between those each time. All right. 200 is very easy, friends, because... Ah, we just now he's going to show us higher than 100, okay? And uh, uh, what happens here is the hundreds go plural, so it'll be literally, are you saying two hundreds, three hundreds, four hundreds, five hundreds, six hundreds, seven hundreds, okay? And the only odd one, the oddball, the true, true, true oddball in that whole bunch of hundreds is the 500 word, okay? It's the one my kids used to call the hard one. <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't do what you expect. It breaks the pattern. But everything outside of that 500 does no break of the pattern or only very tiny break in the pattern. And you'll see what happens. But the word ciento, 100, is going to have to become plural. We're going to have to put an S on the end of it. Okay? 
And this is the only number that the, the only set of numbers that really does that. The thousands don't do this, right? But the the hundreds do. Simply okay. take the word two and we put the word ciento, hundred on it, but it's plural. See, in Spanish, they're thinking two hundreds, three hundreds, unlike our Germanic 100, 200. Okay, so 200, doscientos. 300. Oh, tres, let me, let me back that up. Okay, so 200, doscientos. Okay, and literally, we're putting those two words together, doscientos. Mm -hmm. Doscientos. And the S and the C, I all make the S sound, so doscientos. 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 If they spell it out as a word, you keep the S from the dos and the CI from the ciento. Si, doscientos. 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 Okay. Three hundred. Trescientos. Okay. Again, we're putting together the two literal numbers. Trescientos. 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 Okay. The next one is going to be what you can probably guess it might be. And I bet you can guess what 400 is already. Cuatro cientos. Cuatro cientos. Cuatro cientos. Cuatro cientos. Cuatro cientos. Four hundreds, literally. Okay. The next one's going to break the pattern. Skip five for a second. Six hundred. Oh, Seis, we're going to skip it. Okay, he skips it. He'll come yeah. back to it in a minute. Yeah. We're going to skip because we're going to look at the things that follow the pattern. Here, this follows the pattern. He's giving 500 for a reason. I forgot that he did this. 600 is okay. 600. Cientos. Now go to 800. 800. Okay, now why did I skip five and seven and I didn't go to nine? Because they're troublemakers. They're not going to follow the rule, okay? We always got rule breakers in, in languages, so... 500 is actually going to go back to its Latin root, queen clay, Q-U. It's going to go back to that Latin root. So it's going to bring in that Q-U-I. So here it is, quinientos. Oh, this is the one that really, even though uh, the other one, the other ones he's going to cover are slightly irregular, they're not so bad. This one's pretty bad. But this is the quin, like you had with quince, the 15. Yeah, it's like the quince. 15 yeah. number. We take that same keen that you had from quince and we get, and, and oh, look, instead of cientos, C-I-E-N-T-O-S, we drop the little C. I, I don't know why they do that. They just do. But so it's keen, ientos. Quinientos. Quinientos. 500. Okay. And even though it's an odd, and it's as my my high school kids used to say, the bad one, the hard one. Yeah, it's the hard one, quinientos, but we hear 500 a lot to talk about prices, to talk about uh, years, you know, uh, in history, they talk about the year 1500, and they're gonna hear this word 500 and that 1500. So quinientos, quinientos. And you'll get a chart that'll show you this whole thing. So you'll see it in writing as well. Quinientos, quinientos. All right, so just look at the spelling. A lot of people look at that word and find it intimidating to spell. It's not. Qui, mi, entos. It's not that bad. Come to seven. Now, for 700, the only thing we have to do is remember that we're just going to pull that I out, okay? So we just, pull the I of siete out. Just okay. like we did that for setenta, yeah? Okay. We pulled out the I from siete. We're going to do the same thing for this one. So it's not that irregular. It's a tiny thing you change. Just like we did with 70. We didn't put an I in 70 either. So it's sete cientos. Sete cientos. And that brings us to 900. 900 is going to do what 90 did. We go from nueve, mm -hmm. N-U-E, nueve, nine, to, yeah. oh, Squash, doing a trash compactor on the UE, we smash it down to an O, right? For no benta. We're going to do the same thing here. No be, no be. Just no like be. 90, it also no is going to use its Latin root, noven, to say uh, 900. So it's nove cientos. Nove cientos. Okay, now let's think about it. We get those down, we can count pretty high right now, okay? 
Now, the word for million is okay, me. and we're not going to go that far because you don't really need me, John. Uh, but you do need you do need quite often hundreds numbers because you know, especially if you travel, because monetary units are very different. You know, you get into hundreds of pesos if you go to Mexico, pretty darn fast. Okay, mm -hmm. and if you go to Colombia. Uh, you're probably not going to go to Venezuela right now because Venezuela, it's a tough thing. But Colombia, they uh, I, again, you know, you get into the thousands super, super fast. Here's what you need to know about the thousands. The thousand word is mil, mil, M-I-L, mil, okay, mil. Um, mil. Yeah, mil. Mil is a thousand, and we don't change, like we say, changed uh, ciento into plural, like dos cientos, tres cientos. We don't do that with mil. We just leave it mil. So that's a, the nice thing about mil, a thousand, is that uh, you just tag on other numbers or put other numbers in the front. And I'll give you an example. An example would be like, uh, 1,500, we would say as mil quinientos. Mil quinientos. 1,800 be mil ochocientos. Okay. When we get to 2,000, we don't make it plural like ochocientos. It's just dos mil. Dos mil. Tres mil. Yeah. 10,000. Diez mil. Yeah, uh, 20,000, 20, the 20 number, 20 mil. Yeah, so mil is great because mil always stays mil. <laughs> and you just tag something on in the front of it or to the end of it if you got hundreds combined with a thousand. Yeah, so not too bad. They do have a word million, which is millón. Uh, we're not going to get into the million level quite so much because unless you're working in finance or real estate, you're unlikely to need numbers quite that high. You're unlikely to need that, uh, you know, at this level. If you do need it, there are enough websites I can point you to. You can ask me in an email, hey, I need that, uh, and I can send it to you. But uh, what I'm going to do is I will send you a chart a couple of charts to practice with the uh, hundreds and I'll just preview so you'll know what's coming your way. Just like you had, uh, whoop, ah, just like you had charts, we'll, we'll have a hundred chart and then we'll have a multiple hundreds chart. Where did that go? Uy, momentito. Oh, see, bien. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, you'll get this in your homework email okay. so that you see. Now, the one thing I want to preview so that it's just a caveat, a little warning, and they show you the meal number in multiple thousands. Um, uh, you're going to see a masculine and a feminine, and you're going to be like, whoa, the videos didn't talk about that. No, the videos didn't. Here's what I want you to think about. Don't worry at all about these feminine, look at that, doscientos, doscientas. Don't worry about the feminine. Technically, yes, there are feminines, but you're never, 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 0%, never going to hear a feminine number word with um, prices. Okay. Yeah. You're just not, you're not. Technically, it exists. If I say 200 women attended this, uh, there was a meeting for women entrepreneurs and 200 women. Well, then, yes, technically, they're talking about 200 females and they'll say 200 mujeres. Yes, they will. But when you're talking on the street with people and they're giving uh, just numbers for prices or you know numbers for direct, uh, any kind of numbers, you're not going to hear those feminine forms very often. And if you do, okay, but you know, it, you know, that's not critical. We're not gonna practice the feminine forms. We're gonna practice these. So you're gonna get that chart uh, to work on during the week. So kind of see if you can 
say the numbers. We'll come back and practice those again next week. And we'll practice them with like things out of ads again, mm -hmm. just like we did before. Okay. Um, I go up and that. Any kind of question on numbers? And we'll just need to do more practice as we go along. See you know. No? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, so give yourself time with that. It will take time, but you will get used to it. And <laughs> okay. We're going to move on. We're going to move on to the big bad boy, which is our verbs that talk about to be. Oh, it's a stinker. It's hard. It's difficult. Um, hopefully, when you look at, hopefully you did get a chance to look at and to watch and think about this video during the week, which yeah. I apologize. She's just too cheerful. This was made, I think, for middle school students. Like, oh my God, that I don't know. I it's just one of my, it's my personal bugaboo. It grades <laughs> on my nerves. That kind of cheerful and emphasis like bugs me. However, it is a great explanation of sadness that it really, really is. And, 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 ooh, yeah, Spanish just has weird things about that verb to be, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but what we need to know is that there are the two verbs that both mean to be, but we use them in different situations, okay? So we've got one verb, and I'm going to pull up, uh, ooh, help remind me here. I got way too many things going on. I sent you this chart, did I not? Yes. 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 Uh -huh. yes. Okay. Bien. Okay. Bien. So here's the chart. Uh, and that, that asterisk one, se usa solo en España, means it's only used in Spain. Uh, this is for the verb ser. And the verb ser, think of ser as the essence, because our English word essence actually comes from the Latin thing that ser comes from. And if you understand that ser describes the essence of something, okay. you will get correct most of the time, mm -hmm. at least 60%, maybe higher, when to use ser. We use okay. ser to mean to be when we identify. We're talking about the essence. What's at the core of this thing? What's at the core of this thing that makes it what it is? What, what makes this cup what it is, okay? It's a okay. cup, it's made out of ceramic, yeah? It's big, I can't change that it's big unless I, you know, no, I can't, I ruin it. I can't change that it's big. I can't change that it's made out of ceramic. It's part of its essence. It's okay. size, the color it is, uh, what material was used to make this thing and and what we call it those are all essential they're a core of what this thing is that we call a cup okay and that's why we use said we use said to identify put a name tag on it we identify who or what something is we use said to tell where somebody is from because they can't change where you were born, can't change that. It's over and done with. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know what nationality you are. So your nationality, your origin, where you come from, we can't change that. We use ser. Uh, your job is a part of who you are, kind of. And, you know, okay, every 15-year-old in the world, I ever tell you, oh, but what if you change your job? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. But you know what? Remember, a lot of these languages developed in the Middle Ages started to, to you know, their little infancy developing out of Latin. And, uh, you know what? In the year 1100, 1300, you did not change jobs very much. You know, you were what you were born into profession wise. So that's why those things are the way they are. So we talk about what people's jobs are, uh, you know, anything that talks about a characteristic of what they're really like, okay? Identifying who they are, we use said, but we are, one of our little speed bumps is we need to associate the right form of that verb said. 
In other words, we call these conjugations. That just means a form of the word. Uh, it's, uh, these are forms of the word ser, to be. Because uh, we don't say I to be. I to be, ha uh, you know, I, I, I to be tall. Nobody says that, you know, I am tall. We mean am is a conjugation. So the form that we use, the form of ser, we need for yo to talk about myself is soy. 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 And you put out like soy sauce. Soy. Soy. Okay. Uh, the form of ser that we use with tu to talk to you, to address somebody directly in a familiar, friendly way is eres. 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 Okay. The form of ser that we will use to talk about one human being, one, one person or one thing, if it's a thing instead of a person, is es. Yeah. Yeah. S is kind of close to is, so it's yeah. pretty easy to remember. S, S, yeah. right? S is used for L, L, S. It is used for ella, she, ella, S, she is. It is used for the formal you. So the okay. masculine, yeah, one person, the feminine, one person, and the formal you. They're not the same human being, but they use the same kind of verb, okay? And forever and ever and ever, no matter what verb it is, whether it's ser or a different verb like work or play or run, it'll always use el e a usted. We'll always use the same kind of conjugation. Here it is es. Uh, the we pronoun is nosotros. Nosotros no. uses this form of ser, somos. Oh. Somos. Okay. Yeah. Uh, vosotros in Spain uses sois. We're not going to practice that one because that is only used in Spain. Latin America ignores that completely. They say we don't like that. We don't use it. Forget it. <laughs> okay. So just so you know, uh, you've seen it before, but we won't use it. And the plural of he, the plural of she, the plural of you formal is ellos or ellas or ustedes. And the form of ser we pair up with that is son, son, okay? Uh, ser is what we call a very irregular verb. When you look at ser, uh, it, boy, all those forms of it don't look that much like the core word it comes from, yeah? But that's the same way in English. We have to be, and then we have am is, are. Am, is, are don't sound like they come from the word be. Okay. They're irregular and English does that all the time. Okay. And let's look at our little blurp examples in this little uh, uh, talk bubble because they emphasize when and why we use ser, a form of ser. Soy Mario, identifying. Soy Español, telling nationality where he's from. Soy periodista. Periodista means journalist. Okay. A profession, okay? Uh, soy alto y simpático. I'm tall and nice. These are descriptions, both physical and personality, but they are the core of what kind of person this guy, Mario, is like, right? What he looks like physically. I can't suddenly make him short if he's tall. <laughs> yeah? Okay, uh, simpatico, this is just, oh, he's a nice guy. Generally, he's like this, okay? So for a general characteristic, be they physical or personality, we use there. So here are the forms. Let's see if we can use the right conjugations yeah. in these little fill in the blanks. Okay. Carmen, she's, a Spa she's Spanish, she's from Spain. Carmen? S. 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 We're talking about one person. Carmen es española. Yeah. Sí. Carmen es española. Okay, bien. Uh, yeah. Julio y Hernando. Now I got two people. Julio y Hernando. Son. Son. Son argentinos. Yeah. They are Argentine. Okay, bien. Uh, we are Italians. Nosotros. Somos. Somos italianos. Okay. And if we turn that into a question and we ask, hey, are you guys Italian too? Ustedes también? 
somos? Ah, uh, won't be somos because only we can use somos. And this one is a question. It says, are yeah. you guys? Yeah. Oh, okay. Ah. ah. It is. Son. Yeah. We, it's the same one you use for ellos. Ustedes. It mm -hmm. uses the same verb as ellos. Ustedes son también. Uh, ustedes okay. también son. Yeah. Oh. See that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, ustedes también son italianos. And notice, if somebody asks that question, ustedes también son italianos, the answer would flip back and look at number three. Mm -hmm. Hey, are you guys from this place? Oh, yeah, we are. But we are become somos. Yeah. When you answer the question. Uh, okay. Let's look at cinco. Nosotros no somos, somos, somos italianos, and they're going to say, oh, we're German. So, um, somos alemanes. Somos alemanes, German, alemanes. Somos alemanes. Okay. And notice when we say are not or is not, the way we do that in Spanish is we put the no in front of the verb. Okay. This is kind of a cardinal rule. To make something a negative action, like somebody's not working or is not cooking, mm -hmm. or we are not, <laughs> it's no in front of the verb. So no somos. Uh, and we've got a yo in parentheses because people will leave out the yo. Hola. And they want to say, I'm Pedro. Soy Pedro. Soy. soy Pedro. Okay, we're going to skip seven. That'd be uh, sois, but we're, we don't use that in Latin America. Okay. Ocho, eight. Are you Senor Gonzalez? Uh, we have to pair something yeah. up with usted. Yeah. Es. 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 Usted, usted uses the verb es. Es usted, Senor Gonzalez? Are you Mr. Gonzalez? Okay. Uh, las amigas de Miguel. Oh, Mike's friends. Son. 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 Peluqueras means people who cut hair for a living. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 las amigas de Miguel son peluqueras. Okay. Ah, uh, hey, where are you from? And we're talking using a tú, you. Okay. De donde? From where? De donde? Eres. Eres. De donde eres? De donde eres? Where are you from? Okay. Where are you from? But the polite way instead of the tu way. De donde? Yes. Es. Es usted. Yes. See? De donde yes. es usted. Okay. And what if you're talking to a, two or more people? Hey, where are you guys from? De donde? Son. son ustedes. De donde yes. son ustedes, okay? And then we've got uh, trece. Um, uh, Javier, oh, it is, 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 is Javier an engineer? Is he an engineer? Javier es, es ingeniero, because we're talking yes. about Javier, right? It's not Javier Cama. <laughs> It's Javier es ingeniero. Is he an engineer? Okay. And I want to say, I'm a student. I'm identifying myself. Yo? Yo soy. Soy estudiante de español. Yo soy estudiante de español. And we want to say, oh, careful. The last is the hardest one. Jorge y yo. I'm saying, I'm talking about myself, but I'm putting somebody together with me. Somos? Hey. Okay. Jorge y yo somos mexicanos. Jorge y yo somos mexicanos. We. Oui. Okay. okay. Jorge y yo somos. Anytime you say name a person, y yo. So, Ana y yo. Usted y yo. Tú y yo. Uh, papá y yo. Mamá y yo. Uh, Miguel y yo. It's the same thing as nosotros. Because what does nosotros mean? Nosotros means I'm in the group, but I got people with me. Yeah. yeah. So somebody y yo is the same thing, uses the same verb as nosotros, right? 
Bien? Okay? Bien. Okay. We're going to look at forms of estar. Uh, and you're going to get some little videos to actually work on this that you hear repetition over and over and over again of uh, how these are used. Ay, un momento. Okay. Let's look at estar. Estar does not talk about the essence. No, no, no. Estar talks about a state that somebody or something is in. So when we ask, how are you? They mean, how do you feel today, right? Mm -hmm. Como estas? You can't say, como eres? Well, you can. If you say, como eres, it means, what are you like? Are you tall? Are you short? Are you athletic? Are you clumsy? Yeah, what are you like? But como estas is how are you feeling? So we use estar for how you feel, which is changeable, or where you are located, you use estar. For how you feel and where you are, always use the verb estar. Okay. Yeah. For how you feel, whether it's emotions or health, and where you are, which is location, we always use estar. We use estar for locations, for feelings, and for, uh, um, uh, you know, like health and emotional state, health and emotional state, feelings and health location. Those are when we use it that. All right. And look at the examples in the bubble. And like, like said, it gets forms, but you'll see why we use it. We talk about location. Estoy en Madrid. I'm in Madrid. I maybe wasn't born there. I'm there right now. <laughs> Estoy en Madrid. Estoy de vacaciones. I'm on vacation. Again, it's talking kind of like where I am. I, I'm not at home. I'm on vacation. I'm off someplace. Yeah. Estoy contento. I'm happy. It's happy. how I feel. Contento means happy, content. It's a feeling. It's not a description of what I'm always like. It's a feeling I have. Okay. Estoy cansado. I am tired. Tired. Okay. It's a feeling I have. I'm not always tired. Yeah. So, estoy with these kinds of contextual meanings. But here are the forms. Yo estoy. Right? Tú estoy. estás. Yeah. Él o ella o usted está. Está. Nosotros estamos. Estamos. Uh, vosotros gets the form estáis. We're not going to practice that one, only in Spain. And Ellos or ellas or ustedes, all those three subject pronouns share the same kind of verb and they share the verb están. And I want you to notice a tu verb gets an S at the end. A we verb gets a mos at the end. A they verb or you guys verb gets an N at the end. That is going to be very consistent. That happens all the time with all different kinds of verbs. So those little clues can help you. Let's see if you can get the forms. We're going to go through these kind of quickly because we're running out of time. Perdón. <laughs> uh, buenos dias, Susana. Hi, Susie. Como? How you doing? Como? Como estas? Estas. It's got to be the friendly form because you call her by first name. Ah, Susana. Como estas? With an S at the end. Como estas? And she answered, bien, gracias. Okay. Ah, the books are in the library. Location. Los libros. Están. Están uh, en la biblioteca. The books are in the library. Los libros están en la biblioteca. We're talking about where they're located. Location is estar. Location is estar. Uh, we are very focused. Concentrados. Nosotros. Estamos. Estamos. Estamos concentrados. We are like, ooh, laser beam, yeah? Okay. Uh, ooh, busy is a state. You're not always busy. Yeah. Uh, are you busy? And it's the formal you. Uh, está. Está usted es, ocupado. Está usted ocupado. Are you busy? And the answer would be, oh, no, I'm not busy. Yo no estoy. Estoy. No, yo no estoy Aquí ocupado. Va. Okay. Uh, if I want to say, ooh, perdón, if I want to say, I am very tired. Yo 
Estoy. Estoy. Estoy muy cansada. This would be a, a woman saying I because it's got an A at the end. Yo estoy, estoy muy cansada. I say, oh, you got a clock. A clock, yeah. Reloj yeah. is either this or it's a clock on the wall. <clears throat> Donde, where's the clock? Donde? Donde está? Está el reloj. Where is the clock? I need to know the time. Where is the clock? Where is it located? Donde está el reloj? And you say, oh, it's on the wall, la pared. Está. Está en, en la pared. I oh. want you to notice, if I'm talking about a thing like reloj, clock, to say it is, I don't even use the word it. I just use the verb. Está. Está en la pared. Everybody knows está will mean it is, or she is, or he is, but it is. We don't use the word it to talk about a subject, okay? Just está, okay? Oh, are you guys at home? We got ustedes. Están. Están ustedes en casa? En casa means at home. Están ustedes en casa? Ah, no. We're in school. No, nosotros estamos. estamos. Es, nosotros. Okay, so it's, it's están ustedes, right? Están, están ustedes. ustedes. Están ustedes. Are you guys? Están yeah. ustedes en casa? The we guys you say, no, nosotros estamos. Estamos. No, esto, eh, yeah, no, est uh, nosotros estamos en la casa. Escuela, okay. Uh, ooh, Maria looks pale because she's got a... <laughs> she's got a cold. Resfriada means the state of having a cold. Oh, it's health. It's changeable. Wow, she looks really like all drained, pallid, white. <laughs> white as a sheet. Maria está, está pálida. Wow, her color looks crappy. Yeah. Maria está pálida porque, because, porque she's got a cold. Está. Está resfriada. Resfriada. Está okay. resfriada. A cold is a temporary condition, right? And pale is, oh, the color, you might look rosy-cheeked, you might look pale. It changes, yeah? Changeable states, you say that. Oh, this word does not mean embarrassed. Uh -huh. Big, big, big caveat. This word embarazada means pregnant. Oh dear. It means pregnant. <laughs> embarazada means pregnant always. Okay. So, Cristina está está, está embarazada. Uh, embarazada, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and oh thank God that's a temporary condition. Yes, Cristina está embarazada. Está embarazada. Okay? Bien. Um, and so again, that's a physical state that is temporary. Now we're going to talk about location. We're going to say this city is in the south of Spain. Sevilla está. Está en el sur de España. Sevilla está en el sur de España. One thing, one item, a city. Sevilla está. Sevilla está. We're going to talk about Bogotá and where that is in this country. Uh, it's in the middle of, in the center of. Bogotá está. está en el centro de Colombia. Bogotá está en el centro de Colombia. Oh. Okay. okay. Um, we're going to say she's not in high school. Colegio is a high school. Okay. Uh, and location, location. Ella no, and she's not. It's a negative. Ella no está. Está. She's one person. Ella no está en el colegio because, porque, okay. because she's on vacation. Porque está. Está de vacaciones. Okay. Está de vacaciones. She's on okay. vacation. Uh, they are in the hospital. Ellos. Están. Están. Están, están with an N at the end. En el hospital porque they're están, sick. Están están enfermos. Están enfermos. Ok, bien. Okay, yeah. so, ser and estar, they're problematic. I'm going to send you two videos because they're going to send you, show you lots of repetition of the situations in which you hear forms of ser. 
the situations in a forms of a spad. Okay, so the situations, and we'll we'll play with that more next week. Um, I can only do that with the chart. Well, but that's a normal thing. <laughs> now, yeah, yeah, that's okay. okay. Your first hump is knowing what form of a star do I use? What form of sand do I use? Yeah. And yeah. that's okay. This matter of getting used to whether it's sad or a star takes a long time. Students learn sad and how in first year. They learn sad and start in second year. They learn sad and start in third year Spanish. They use sad and start in fourth year Spanish. And they go on to yeah. college and they still do lessons on sad and start. Still, <laughs> because it is that. It is that problematic for English speakers. It is that problematic. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to give you videos so you hear the context. Mm -hmm. of, and they're going to be heavy on the yo nosotros, just so you know. These videos are heavier on the yo for me. Also notice, we, we usually won't say yo. Mm -hmm. We usually won't say nosotros. We usually won't say tú. Forget about it because the verb tells you the whole thing. Mm -hmm. There's only one form of estar that matches up with yo. So why say yo estoy? It would be like, like saying in English, you can just say am. Am busy. Mm -hmm. We don't, but they do <laughs> because they can. So they say, well, why not? So people will drop, you know, you should, right now, we're pairing up the yo with the verb, the tu with the verb, no stuff, but people will drop the yo, they'll drop the tu, they'll drop the nosotros, because there's only one verb, yeah. So I'm going to send you some videos to watch with that, and what I want you to do in the book, because I, I asked you to look at part of chapter four, but not all of chapter four, um, I want you to check out in your book for this week, the vocab of the house for chapter four. And uh, you've got all the audio that I gave you last week and the uh, email last week. And just kind of get familiar with the, um, uh, yeah, around the house. We're gonna talk about walls, bathrooms, kitchen, apartment, house, uh, um, uh, bed, dining room. Yeah. If you get familiar just with like rooms in the house and a couple things like chair, table, bed, chair, table, bed, like not every piece of furniture. Yeah. You don't need to know how to say faucet and, you know, doorknob. Oh my God. <laughs> well, let's go. Yeah. You, yeah. Your book is going to tell you which are like the basics. Uh, kind of get familiar with that vocabulary and we will, we're going to uh, merge some of that vocabulary with the ser and estar business uh, next okay. week. Okay, we're going to merge it because we can't avoid it, uh, but it will help you to merge and, uh, and we'll practice some of those bigger numbers next week. Yeah, sound good? See? Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Focus on looking at those higher numbers, the hundreds, and your room vocabulary as newer stuff. And the set is to kind of start to dip your toe into that, get used to the forms. They're very irregular verbs. And that'll be it for today. See, está bien. Again. Again. Perfecto. Okay. Bueno, nos vemos. Sí, entonces. Sí, if you have questions in the middle of the week, just shoot me a quick email. Bien? Okay. Okay. Vale. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.